Good afternoon. It is 16 o'clock on World Hosting Days 2017. We're in the political arena at the Eco Booth in the ballroom, and we're going to have the second part, or actually the third discussion today with this panel. And uh, this afternoon's session is about IT security. Are we doing enough to protect critical infrastructures? And um, what you might not see on camera is that you know we're in the middle of an exhibition hall, so there are a lot of visitors walking by, but also they're stopping by, listening into this conversation. And if possible, we would like to make this interactive. So it is very well possible that somebody from the audience is going to step up and ask a question to the panel. Now, my name is Thomas Rickard. I'm Director of Names and Numbers with ECO, an internet industry association in, uh, based in Germany with more than 1,000 members in more than 60 countries, so it's quite international today. And to my uh, right, I have uh, Astrid Osenbrug from the Netherlands. She's been a member of parliament. She has a technical background, which is sort of unusual for politicians, and we want to try and tap on her expertise in the discussion to come. We have uh, Jimmy Schulz. Jimmy has been a member of the German parliament from 2009 to 2013, and he's now campaigning in Bavaria to get back in this fall when we have our elections. So welcome, Jimmy. We have Klaus Landefeld. Klaus Landefeld belongs to the first generation of internet entrepreneurs in Germany. He has set up multiple ISPs, sold them. You know, he's been in the business for, for decades now, and he's been on ECO's board for, I think, more than a decade now also. Since 1997, so he is celebrating his 20th anniversary on ECO's board. Welcome, Klaus, and we have Peter Schaar. Peter is the former Federal Data Protection Commissioner in Germany, and he is now a chairman of the European Academy of uh, Freedom of Information and Data Protection. So welcome to all of you. Now, how to start a discussion on IT security? It's such a broad topic that it's hard to stop hard to start, and it's uh, difficult to prioritize, which is why I would like to keep it relatively broadly. But we saw recent initiatives at the European level with the NIST directive that aims at trying to provide for a, an adequate or high standard of protection, particularly for critical infrastructures. And now the member states are implementing that into local laws, and we see attempts we, of, of, of making that happen. There's some pushback from from industry as well as other players. But all in all, Astrid, let me start with you. Do you think that IT security in Europe is in a good state? Uh, in a good state, no. It's getting better every year, I guess. But uh, there's still a lot of work to do. And if you talk about uh, uh, critical infrastructure, it's not going uh, uh, in the cables in the ground, but also you talk about the water supply, about uh, gas supply, about bridges uh, you can open and close. That's critical too. Uh, and that's something the government should worry about and, and think about. And they sent all the guys home and they put everything on the internet. And now they start thinking ba uh, about how do we uh, make sure it's all safe. But I think that's the r wrong way around. But we can discuss that. Okay, thank you for that. Jimmy, has the political sector done enough to provide critical infrastructures in particular? No. <laughs> okay, it's another, one, another short answer to a complicated question. No, the political sector hasn't done enough. Uh, if you need a proof, uh, well, the German Bundestag, the German parliament has been hacked one and a half years ago even while discussing uh, critical infrastructure. Well, you might ask if a parliament, a national parliament, is a critical infrastructure, but I think yes it is. And it's ridiculous that it has been discussed within the parliament how to protect others and totally ignoring their own security. Thanks, Jimmy, for this blunt statement about the state of play with the German parliament. Klaus. What's your view on the, let's, let's focus on the regulatory landscape for the moment and move to other areas later. Yeah. 
Okay, let's start with regulatory landscape. Um, obviously, on critical infrastructure, there's been some improvement. We have uh, the uh, law on that since um, mid last year, in effect, um, which um, provides f uh, already um, uh, in Germany um, for the protection of critical infrastructure. That goes for se uh, several sectors, um, but IT and telecommunications obviously is one sector in that, um, and uh, it is supposed to. Um, uh, to, to uh, at least give some procedures, uh, some some basic minimum requirements on how the uh, the the um, operators of the critical critical infrastructure should protect their infrastructure from um, from being hacked and um, from being hardened uh, more or less against attacks. Um, if that is enough, it's very difficult to tell right now. It's um, it's only recently been started. We're we're still in the implementation process, um, but. Um, uh, it's, it's being enhanced right now with, um, with the adoption of the, the um, NIS um, um, a directive um, in, um, into German law as well, um, uh, which um, still is being used as an opportunity to, to add some stuff. It's, not, um, it, it's still in the parliamentary process and um, the, there's currently some, um, some attempts to add um, certain stuff like um, uh, IoT security and so on, uh, uh, rights for, for carriers to, to watch data being transmitted over the infrastructure. That is still being added uh, to the implementation process of, of the, the NIST framework. Um, uh, so, yes, there is a lot of work being done on the political arena. If that is effective, that is really the question. Peter, would you also like to take a step at that? Uh, well, I... I want to go beyond uh, NIS and, and uh, IT security legislation, uh, I want to ask uh, who is responsible, who, uh, who is accountable for, for, for security. And there is a lack of clarity uh, until now. So, of course, providers have the duty to make uh, their, their equipment safe and uh, to uh, provide uh, services with a minimum or at least a minimum standard of security. But uh, what's about the manufacturers uh, uh, who are providing uh, 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 gadgets, uh, uh, equipment, and so on? Uh, they are not on board until now. How, how to uh, guarantee uh, the security of routers, for example? Uh, one problem is that uh, there, there is uh, a tension between some legal requirements giving law enforcement access to, to data uh, uh, and even secret services and on the other hand uh, uh, to make uh, the networks and, 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 and communication means safe. This is a contradiction and uh, there are a lot of cases where information uh, uh, is given to or, or, or uh, public authorities have gotten information about security uh, le uh, leaks or holes uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, the, the word uh, of uh, zero day exploits this is uh, sometimes bought by uh, by governments and not used for close the holes, uh, but to use it to, to, to go through them to, to the information. And, and this is a real problem we, we, we haven't uh, uh, solved uh, until now. So I guess the, the question then is, is it sufficient to wait for a regulator to come up with concepts to provide for an adequate security level. You know, what I find interesting is that the lawmakers obviously try to provide a, a framework. You know, we see this with the IT security law that has been established in, in Germany a while back, where they say, okay, the transportation industry, electricity, water, insurances, finances, they shall give themselves, or they get the opportunity to give themselves operational procedures that can then be accepted by government authorities as okay. So basically, we are having a law that asks the industry to come up with solutions for itself. 
And, you know, is it the, do we need to rely on the government there, or would it better to come up with purely technical solutions? Astrid. Uh, we need both, because uh, you already mentioned the Internet of Things, and we see that everything you buy has an IP address, and some of the things uh, will be sending for years and years and years without nobody is taking responsibility for the item. So I think you need regulation for that. You should make sure that uh, the companies also take good care of their customers, of their software, of their uh, hardware. Uh, and I also think that the government al should also trust the companies. Because if you make an appointment, we did the internet thing for uh, well many, many years, and things went good until it became commercial. That's my personal opinion, but then you see uh, you have to uh, make sure that things get safe again and then you start a, you, you make a law and then people try to work around it and then you make another law and maybe you should think about what's good for uh, the people, what's good for companies because uh, all uh, if you uh, get hacked somewhere and, and you can't get any uh, you can cross a bridge, then your whole country is in trouble. So you really have to think about making a law that says you have to make sure you uh, protect your stuff, and the company has to think, I'm responsible. So it's, it works uh, two ways. So um, I'm not looking at anyone specifically, but uh, the new laws provide or uh, establish notification duties of breaches. This is something that... Do you want to respond to in, that? Yeah, because, yeah, it's, I mean, just to be very clear, I mean, we need to differentiate between critical infrastructure and IT, or let's say I protection of individuals in this case. It's just, there's a clear separation. So the, the, the um, uh, law we have, the, the uh, pro um, uh, uh, infrastructure protection law we have in Germany and the, uh, and the NIS uh, regulatory framework, they are, they are all supposed to protect critical infrastructure, large-scale operators, or typically large-scale operators, and there is um, there's a lot of money involved and you can actually care for, um, uh, let's say, high-level infrastructure where you can, where you can have procedures, uh, company procedures, and, and, um, and, and it's more about reporting, seeing that, that uh, this, this um, uh, this infrastructure is actually approved, that, that um, uh, if there are violations, if they are being hacked and things like that. So this is really about operating the country. The other end of the spectrum is IoT devices nowadays. And the problem with IoT devices is that there really isn't any budget for security. If you look at it seriously, right? We're talking about devices which are a couple of dollars, a couple of euros maybe, um, uh, and, and people are buying it and, and expecting them to be secure um, when they're really in the development process and, and in, 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 in the whole, um, uh, there's a standard platform is being used which is not inherently not secure. It was never designed to be connected to the net directly. Like that. And, and then this is, this is in whatever camera um, uh, being online from your home and, and being able to provide a few from maybe even your bedroom or something like that. So and that, that, that's really is a completely separate issue. This will not put um, our society as risk as, as an or let's say our, our um, uh, let's say the um, the operation of the country at risk, but it will put pri privacy at risk, and and that is really the problem and the issue, and um, but it's a completely separate topic where. The, the whole procedure, the political procedure, but also the technical procedures, and how can we solve that? It takes a lot longer because we really need to look at how software is developed, how hardware is developed, how, how updates uh, uh, work, and, and also educate the people on where the risks are and how they can resolve the issue, which is currently not the case. Just a follow-up question, Klaus. So that means that uh, the government should stay out more or less and that we should be talking more about awareness and uh, introducing security into all aspects of, of digital I, life? No, I'm not saying that because um, uh, in, in all sorts of products, um, the, the government is involved in making them more secure. So like whatever, if we talk about children's toys, there's a lot of regulations on or minimum requirements on what, what, which these need to upheld. For electrical devices, we have minimum requirements. And we don't have that for IoT right now. So. The, the political process on uh, establishing rules and, and finding some, some basic grounds on how that should work, that is really a 
important stuff, but it needs to be solved on a European level um, because we, we are talking single market, we're talking about devices which are sold universally throughout Europe, and only then the market is large enough that that um, international um, uh, companies, international uh, uh, um, uh, development uh, will actually um, take that into account and will deliver devices which adhere to these minimum requirements. And if we, but if we don't solve that, then, then basically you're open for any hacker. So, so there needs to be some, some, um, uh, some process to, to solve it, but it will take some time. And we're talking of, of billions of devices already connected to the net. In Europe, it's probably, if you take all of Europe, it's probably already something like four to five billion devices already connected to the network, which don't have these regulations. And if we start now until this is solved, it's probably going to be tens, uh, 10 billion, something like that, before we actually have new procedures in place. So it's, it's really time that the political process is started and that we re resolve it um, urgently. Okay, let's stay with uh, Internet of Things for a moment. Uh, as a data protection person, Peter, this must uh, scare the bejesus out of you, having all these devices that uh, make persons identifiable. Um, do you see a way of fencing this in or, or actually resolving the issue? I think uh, uh, it, it's a big threat for privacy that uh, uh, data processing is part of the things. So it's integrated in, th uh, in, in things and um, uh, everything I use uh, produces data. And uh, every data use uh, or the data traces can be put together to profiles and the profiles can be used for purposes I I'm not interested in as a person. So, so it's, a, it's an additional threat to uh, data protection. On the other hand, uh, 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 we, we, we need a, a more comprehensive understanding of security. As you said, uh, Internet of Things uh, uh, is a very complex uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, if we, if we see in a classical way uh, data security, we, we know that is in, in integrity, uh, availability, and confidentiality. So, but uh, focused on the single procedure, focused on a single computer or so, but now uh, the, every piece of, uh, uh, that, or everything that is integrated in this uh, uh, global network might be also a, an attacker. It, it, it can be um, uh, used for attacking other uh, uh, information systems. So we need a, this, this comprehensive approach and therefore we need a, uh, of course a minimal standard for data, data security and even privacy in the Internet of Things, but we need more uh, uh, scrutiny on, uh, on, on the infrastructures themselves. So if there is an energy infrastructure uh, that is seen as critical, a critical one, uh, uh, it must be uh, constructed in a way that minimizes the risks. And uh, a kind of compartmentalization of, of uh, 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 these infrastructures might be uh, uh, useful to, to prevent threats. So uh, if I, I, I have uh, a light and, and, and this is uh, uh, part of, uh, of an intelligent or smart uh, uh, metering infrastructure, uh, this, the information pro provided by this uh, 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 gadget should not be uh, uh, processed outside uh, or, or without the control of, uh, of the person who is uh, running uh, the system so, so or who uh, was the owner of the home uh, or, or, so that is that, I think this is, this is the challenge to, to come to, to new uh, 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 systems and new designs of the, those kinds of interconnected systems. And do you, or where do you think such rules should be made? And how should they be introduced? This is a political issue and uh, uh, we are here in Europe uh, 
and I, I would say this is not. Uh, 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 we should not let this to the to, to the single member states of the European Union. We should come to a common understanding uh, of uh, uh, how to protecting these critical infrastructures. So, if you were in office tomorrow, what would an initiative to that effect look like? Would you try to tackle it? Well, IoT security, for that matter. Um, IoT security is a very important thing. It's as you correctly uh, uh, stated, that is a different thing to critical infrastructure. It might be critical infrastructure, but it normally might not. Okay, first thing I agree, we should implement um, a government ruled, ruled uh, minimum standard. The technical details shouldn't be done by the lawmaker, but they should be done by industry, by the pr producers, or by whoever. But politicians are not good at technical standards, so leave, leave them out here. Just de de define a minimal level of security, which all, where everyone can agree on. That's the one point. The other point Peter um, just mentioned uh, is a different thing, is that who owns the data and who has access to it this is a quite important thing. This is definitely something um, the lawmaker or on European level should be ruled. So everyone can know transparently who has access to the data of my light bulb, who has access to the data my car produces, which is quite a complicated thing. And this should be absolutely clear. I, I will, I'd like to know, I have to know, which data is collected and who has, who's storing it and who has access to it. This should be regulated. So I know, I could agree on that the light bulb will be controlled from a company in the US. It's perfectly okay, but I have to agree to it. Astrid, let's go back to the IT security, not, not only IoT, I think that's too big of a topic for us to exhaustively discuss today. But um, if you went back, should you ever, to the parliament, would there be any initiative in the area of IT security that you would introduce because you think that a certain element is missing? I really have to think about it because I did some things like uh, the, how you call that, you have to uh, report if you have a leak in your uh, system. So that's a good one because now we get uh, a chart of what companies are leaking and how they uh, make sure uh, it, it gets fixed. It's just like a bit uh, uh, shaming, shaming or something. But we have to know because if you know that things go wrong, then you know the other company knows. Okay, <laughs> that went wrong. We have to do it better. So that's something I already did because I was thinking about what, what you can do more for the uh, infrastructure. I still think you have to teach uh, people to uh, uh, be aware themselves because I think and I think the government sh should talk more to uh, internet providers hosting providers whatever and, and team up that's I would make it I think I should put another proposition about that team up uh, uh, learned of learn from each other, work together, and make the infrastructure better, stronger, and safer. Jimmy, what would you introduce, if you could, tomorrow, in order to add missing parts, should there be any, to IT security regulation? Well, I think um, we have three parts and three responsibilities. First of all, I start with the state. Of course, the state has to set that level of um, well, agreement for uh, standards. Um, the companies and industry and the providers have to implement these and develop the technical details. And well, we all of us have our own responsibility for our own data. We, if you sign um, a contract, you have to read it. You have to understand it. Um, it should be maybe in the way written that you can read it and can understand it, which is a thing I really would like to see is that um, data, um, uh, re uh, well, privacy regulations and, and uh, 
uh, contracts, for example, with companies like Facebook should be in a readable manner and understandable. That's one, one, one thing. But we all have to look for ourselves and for our privacy and security. We can't um, outsource uh, the, the responsibility for everything to the state and to the companies. Klaus, uh, we heard from Astrid that uh, one of the things that she's been fighting for was actually a notification duty for companies that, you know, that saw breaches. Now, since this has been operationalized with the IT security laws, do you think that the um, authorities involved are equipped to process all the incoming information? Well, currently they're most definitely not. Um, the, this whole branch has had to be established again. and. Um, uh, it, but it's a very small amount. So, so actually, the, the number of reported um, uh, infringements or, or um, uh, accidents are, is very low currently. Um, it sh that might actually go up. But the question really for, for the carriers is also where, where does um, involvement start and stop? And I wanted to jump in before uh, for that reason. Um, it's very interesting because currently the politicians, they talk to carriers and ISPs. And the responsibility also for reporting incidents, finding out about um, uh, uh, malicious traffic and things like that, this is all being laid on the ISPs and the carriers. Which, which is very strange because all of a sudden you find yourself uh, in a role of a babysitter for your customers um, for their IT security, which is not really what, what you signed up for. I mean, this is not where we, we have. We have our customers, um, but they buy stuff somewhere on the net, uh, in the next uh, discount, uh, wherever. And th there is no responsibility uh, on, on this end. And this is really what needs to be changed. So the whole trade, trade associations, the importers, everyone needs to be on board and being brought into the role of the responsible parties because they actually sell and, and they, they ship that stuff to, to the customers. And they, they simply use it and then and then the, then the role of safeguarding that, of actually switching off the customers, of, of, of cleaning the, the environment there. If you switched off a customer and he's unable to, to resolve the issue, is always with the ISP or the carrier the, the, the customer signed up to. And that is a huge problem uh, nowadays because in the end, that is not part of the business process and, and you didn't consider this when you, when you started an ISP. Yeah. It's just like that you take in, in custody and charge the, the people who build a street that a terrorist uses it. <laughs> well, but, but on the other hand, I would say uh, even industry has its uh, responsibility and uh, they, they have to be liable for what they are doing. Of course, ISPs can, are not liable for the content they transport. This is a very, very crazy idea. Uh, even uh, uh, some politicians like it. I, I don't agree with them, uh, but on the other hand, on the other hand, industry and even providers have uh, uh, to provide their services, their products in a way that they are basically secure and privacy friendly. And I think it's a long way from today to, to, to this stage and perhaps we need some more uh, legal requirements in this field too. So we're asking for more legal requirements, which is an interesting thing to see. Um, but actually, Peter, I wanted to ask you something different. Uh, we, we spoke about the human element in IT security, raising awareness, educating people on how to use their, their, their devices and the services that they love. But, you know, particularly when you look at things like advanced persist, persistent threats, where uh, anomalies of code are being introduced into a network, and only months later they show to be malicious. That's nothing that you can change with training people. No. That's why you need technical solutions. And what you see in the technical sphere is that most of the products that you can deploy in order to detect all this can't easily be deployed by companies or businesses because you, know, you need to get the workers' council involved or you need to change labor contracts because you know, they also sp spot almost everything that the employers are doing. So does data protection, for that matter, stand in the way of efficient IT security? Well, there, there is a tension, of course. I wouldn't, wouldn't deny, but I wouldn't say that labor law is the, most, uh, 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 the biggest problem in this field. The, the, the biggest problem is that if you want a very high level of security, you, you have to 
uh, intercept everybody who was involved in the, uh, the whole procedures. And uh, we have to question whether this would be the right way to go. So we, we need the workers, we need engineers uh, uh, doing a good work, and perhaps they need also uh, our, uh, and, and they uh, uh, deserve uh, uh, also uh, uh, that that we trust them. So so it's a tension, of course, but the main problem is that we 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 have to make clear that everything uh, uh, or every service that is deployed should be. Uh, uh, checked uh, with standard methods at least, and, and there must be uh, audits on, on a regulatory basis, whether uh, 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 the, uh, there are some uh, Trojans or, or, or other threats inside networks and so on. So we need more techni technical uh, know-how and, and, and personal uh, uh, doing such work, uh, and uh, so it's a kind of investment. Would you add to that? Yeah. Well, we, we had that discussion on a political level also in, in, in German Parliament already a couple of years ago. We might manage that on a software level. Can we do that on hardware? Have a trustworthy hardware? I think that's an answer that we can't easily, uh, <laughs> a question that we can't easily answer. Um, last round for, for uh, all of you to contribute to, if you wish to, is IT security and international, if not global, cooperation. And whether the political environment allows for efficient global responses to security threats. Uh, one, um, one important part of tackling the bad guys efficiently is an exchange of intelligence. So what we see with the data protection laws over here is that you know there are hurdles to sharing information with other you know parts of IT security companies in Asia or in the US and also we saw a, a document that was leaked from the Trump administration talking about IT security and international cooperation is not mentioned with a single word so do we see a a trend to trying to find island solutions when it comes to IT security or, you know, how do you think the international uh, collaboration can be stimulated to be sufficiently efficient? Anyone to well, well, I, to I go would first? say there, 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 there is an uh, exchange uh, of intelligence uh, between U.S. and, and, and Europe, but uh, it is under the, in, in the, uh, under the discretion, discretion of, of the intelligence services which information they share, they share with whom. So I'm not talking about intelligence agencies, but security vendors, those who provide software products and services to secure things. They also need to exchange data about breaches and stuff like that uh, at the international level. And there are legal hurdles to make that efficient. But not, mm. not privacy laws. Mm. Thomas, as long as there are states being the source of the problem, it might, it, might, it might be not a good idea to trust the information you get. Yeah, Klaus. Let, let me jump in there. The, um, I mean, let's, let's be clear. This, this is an international problem and can only be solved internationally. But I think industry is exchanging information. And if you look at the, the global security industry, that it is all global. It is international. Um, uh, the, the large... Um, uh, the large vendors are all international. So, if if, uh, if you look at the uh, the operating system vendors, if you look at the security vendors, if you look at all, they are all international. So, the exchange there definitely is international. Still, um, the the requirements are very different, and that needs to be tackled so that we have an, an international basis to to actually. Um, implement it because the the market is very lazy in implementing security um, and that is that is everybody more or less because it's inconvenient and so on so so there needs to be more more being done here that that security on principle is raised um, the um, I, I don't think this is really a problem of um, uh, of 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 the vendors and the operators because they want to solve that problem but um, just one example, I mean, we operate the Internet Exchange in Germany, you know that, and um, uh, 
we did we have a project there for black holing so so basically to provide uh, security against DDoS um, uh, and an analysis there tells us that about five percent of the traffic of DDoS traffic is from Germany so systems being attacked in Germany are attacked let's say at five percent from Germany the rest is international and that goes for most everywhere so um, if you don't solve that problem on an international level you will never solve it because even if you have the toughest security laws and and the best protection for for IOT devices or whatever you secure every home user in Germany so that no no botnet clients are in Germany yes you'll still have 95% of the traffic attacking your systems um, so that doesn't solve the issue it needs to be solved internationally the the, the, the general level on a global scale needs to be reduced so so just changing whatever the rules for IT devices here doesn't help us it needs to be really being done everywhere and um, if you look at Asia for example the markets there are huge a uh, huge amount of the traffic is coming from that region and we don't know the first bit when we talk about international cooperation we typically talk about cooperating with the US um, or within Europe there's almost no discussions at least none I'm aware and I believe I am mostly aware of what is going on um, uh, th th about uh, doing this with China, for example, yeah, South Korea, and so on. I know they, they have their own activities. South Korea have one of the first laws for I IoT security, which is already in effect. And we haven't copied. We don't look at this. So at least from a political viewpoint, this is not being looked at, how it is solved there. And, and this could be a, a big inspiration on how things could be solved, because that is one of the most uh, advanced uh, societies in that respect. So yes, we need more international co collaboration. And we might be able to learn from these countries. I guess that's a good point, not only to look towards the US, but also to other uh, territories, other countries, other areas. Jimmy, you yeah, want to that, add to that? That was one of the reasons I've been, well, two months ago for a week in uh, um, South Korea just to talk to city authorities, um, state authorities, to see how they deal with these problems. Very interesting. We have a completely different view on uh, privacy, completely different view, but interesting to see how they solve other problems. So I learned a lot. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the, of the session. Now, let's just imagine 10 years down the line. Will the situation be better? Will it be worse? Will the battle against, uh, I, I, against the bad guys be, be lost? So what's your out view? Just one sentence, just a gut feeling. Astrid. Uh, I hope it will be better. <laughs> and there will be still be bad guys and good guys and we still fight I think about every little centimeter on the internet and still the internet has no boundaries so I don't think it's getting worse maybe the same but not worse because I really think we grow in this together and we have to but we have to edu edu educate our people so we have to start now so in 10 years it will be better I hope Well, um, the legend says the, the IP protocol, the internet protocol, has been developed to survive a nuclear war. In fact, it has survived most of the politicians so far. <laughs> so it, it might be quite robust. And I'm an optimist, and I think, I really believe, uh, that we will manage that. The internet will survive it even if politicians try to destroy it. And um, I'm doing my best uh, to get politicians to, uh, uh, well, to accept the internet as a good thing. Thanks very much. Yeah. Klaus? Yeah, it's an uphill battle, and like um, the battle against whatever fraud, money laundering, whatever terrorism, it's, I don't think it can be won. So it's, it's, it's um, yes, we might solve the easy attacks we have today, we might have basic security, but then we will have uh, advanced threats or advanced attack scenarios and so on. So this is, the, the process will, will always be there. As long as there is money to be made from attacking a system, um, it will be attacked and there will probably be ways to, to go around it. Uh, it's just a question how difficult it will be but then the, um, the, the attacking community will evolve as well. So it's, it's going to be, um, I, I don't think we can solve it. Um, it might be better than it is today, because today it's the first round, no one ever considered it. Um, so the systems are basically 
open sitting there. Um, so that will be changed. But uh, as I said, I believe the threat will increase as well. Well, I'm a little bit more skeptical as most of you. Uh, I would say uh, we learn uh, only, or we will learn in this field, as in other fields, uh, only then if anything happens. And uh, if there is a big bang, a big blackout, this will have effects. But if it runs as it runs today, I'm skeptical that we can tackle the challenges. And if I may, I guess my view on this is that, you know, education, awareness raising is good, but the more sophisticated the attacks are, the less that part helps. So I think that we need to start working on self-healing computer systems and IT systems so that you take away the human element, the, 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 the necessity of the necessity of, of patching manually and all that, but the systems need to do, take care of, them, of themselves more or less. And I think that could be a way forward. So let's conclude this session. Thank you so much, Astrid, Jimmy, Klaus, and Peter. It was very interesting talking to you. Thanks so much, and goodbye from WHD 2017.